Hey everyone, Charles here. Just wanted to come on here and make a quick video, uh, kind of showing you guys what I've been working on and the new update. So, you know, first of all, I want to show you guys this this graph. Uh, this is basically a graph of all the messages that are sent using Roho. So we're getting some traction here, right? You see, last month we did two hundred thirty thousand messages, almost month before, almost one hundred fifty thousand. Um, so this is very exciting, guys. You know, um, just wanted to say thank you to everyone and thank you for your support thus far. Um, but yeah, let's just get right into it, guys. Um, all right, so. You know, you'll see again, there's two graphs here. So one of the trends, I guess, with this update is probably going to be analytics. Um, you know, being able to see what's going on, being able to basically view everything, view metrics, debug. But this is still working on it, right? So this is the, the dashboard for you guys. So I guess the admin dashboard for like your agency, right? Um, so here you can see we can filter by, you know, the, the time range, all time, right? So you can see we have messages sent and then we have calls handled, right? And then as well as a um, leaderboard, right? Again. Still working on this, but basically you can see your sub accounts and how much they're uh, using it compared to others. All right, we have the uh, updated sub account tab right here. We can search by the location ID, of course. Edit the sub account. Right, super simple. Not really much to edit on this other than the active and the, the daily call limit, which I'll get into later. Uh, and then you can obviously log in as a user. That'll open up a new tab. All right, yeah. So again, um, I'll be updating this, but these are all your transactions. You can see by the sub account location ID. Obviously, you can you know search by the time range, all that good stuff. Um, anyway. This is just a sneak peek, I guess. But okay, so the settings tab um, you'll see is you know looks a lot better. Obviously, the UI. Um, first of all, we have the integration right set up. Um, moving on to the next tab, this, so you can really easily manage this. Um, you know, or you can really easily manage your subscription through through Roho now. Uh, some of you guys had multiple subscriptions right for different things, but I've consolidated it. Um, did a lot of work on the back end to make sure that it's smooth process for you guys. But yeah, so that's pretty straightforward. Moving on to payment settings. Um, of course, right? You got your payment method, your wallet balance, and then the auto recharge. Straightforward. And then we have other, uh, just, you know, set your daily call limit for the AI calls, which are pretty crazy, guys. I'm going to get into that. It's really awesome. Um, and then obviously the Stripe rebuilding down here. You know, we have the Stripe rebuilding down here. So, and guys, that's pretty much it for the admin dashboard. Um, you'll notice I took away the ability to create a sub account, right? Um, and that's, you know, basically because the sub account should only be created through the custom menu link. Um, you know, having that location ID on the custom menu link makes it a lot easier because there was some trouble with a couple of you guys before where you would make a sub account and then maybe mistype the location ID or forget to put the location ID in there. Um, so to mitigate that, basically, sub accounts can only be created from the custom menu link, which we'll get into now. So I'm going to switch to GHL now and show you guys basically how it looks in GHL, the new update. So all right, guys, um, you know, staying consistent with the theme of analytics and, and metrics, we have uh, a graph where you can see the messages sent by all of your AI bots on a sub account level here. Um, these graphs, you know, I'll update, we'll get into this. So the link sent doesn't really come into play anymore at all. But um, again, the dashboard, you know, we'll add some cool metrics here. Um, next up, we have the conversations. So the conversations tab and the conversations and everything in general has been improved a lot. Um, so I basically refactored a ton of the code, cleaned it up a lot. Um, so you can see, right? All these conversations um and the ones that don't have names on there either don't have like a first name or last name is their ghl contact or it's like a widget one um anyway the really really awesome feature that i've added um i think it's gonna save you guys a lot of headache but this is basically you can see all of the contacts that the bot is active on um and all that really is guys like literally all this list is is just a list of contacts that have the ai bot active tag um so if you want to deactivate all of them you can obviously do that or just deactivate a few of them but um you know some people maybe we're getting confused on how do we turn the bot off. And again, guys, remember the, the AI bot active tag is literally the on off switch. So that's what I tell people, right? It's an on off switch, AI bot active tag on or off. Um, right. So moving on, uh, AI phone numbers, we'll get into another video. I'm going to make a whole different video on like the AI calling, um, you know, just cause there's, it's really exciting, but anyway, over here, this is probably one of, or, you know, obviously my favorite, right? Some of you guys may remember when we used to have the error logs. Um, but, you know, before some of those error logs really didn't give much information. Um, you know, maybe it was calling one function and expecting some value um, that the value never came through, right? Then we would we would never know what happened with the with the previous function. So, what I basically went ahead and did is on the back end, right? Uh, I made it so that we can actually see all of the uh, actual error messages, even when it's from another class or like another function. Right? I basically added a decorator to all the classes, um, so like a function that calls a function, right? Um, so if we go to error here, you can see okay, this is a really long error, right? But Right, 
failed to execute send DHL message, name, missing phone number. So that person didn't have a phone number, right? Too many requests, um, right? D and D active, all that kind of stuff. Um, now let's actually get into the AI bot UI. I'm super excited to show you guys this because it's it's pretty awesome. Um, so I'm just gonna edit this bot right here, and of course, you guys, you know, I'm, I've been improving the UI on on all fronts, but um, general settings, of course. Um, so we have the bot ID as usual. Um, now we have the bot nickname. So a lot of you guys have uh, been asking for this, right? But super simple, basically just an internal name for you to uh, organize your bots, um, and then the name you want the bot to call itself, business name, right? And if you go to AI model now, you guys will notice that um, I'm only giving you guys the option to use GPT-40 and GPT-40 mini. Um, and the reason for this is number one, they're the newest models, right? The flagship models as OpenAI calls them. But also GPT-40 is 80 or maybe even 90% cheaper than 3.5. And to be honest guys, it's basically GPT-4. Um, so insanely cheap, really high rate limits um, and really good. GPT-40 mini is what I've been using, right? Um, and then of course you can use uh, GPT-40 if you, um, you know, really want uh, those high quality um, messages, right? And then next up, we have the uh, base instructions, previously extra info, whatever you want to call it, right? Basically, this is just like a little extra prompt that you guys um, can can put in here, all right? Um, and this is in addition to the FAQs in the script, but again, super simple. And guys, this is pretty awesome. Um, so the message queue is now able to be randomized. And I was actually, you know, this is pretty exciting, but before, um, you know, the previous message queue, I was basically having it inside of the same Python script. It would do time.sleep, right? So it would actually wait. And it was costing a lot of money on AWS to, to, to wait, right? But I figured out basically how to schedule functions, right? Um, the cron time or whatever it's called, right? Or, you know, basically I figured out how to schedule API calls on, on AWS. Um, so we can honestly have this be whatever it is, but the fact that you can randomize it now, guys, is going to add such a, you know, big level of uh, personalization to it. Because um, if you just have the message queue and then they, you know, wait 60 seconds and it waits one minute every single time, that's a lot different than a randomized message queue. Um, so if you guys are... You know, looking to randomize it, make it look more personal. Um, um, and then, of course, make sure to save. Call completed webhook. Uh, you know, we'll get into that later. Again, you know, AI calls are going to be crazy. Um, moving on to the FAQ. So you'll notice everything is now up here in this little, like, horizontal um, menu right here, right? But the FAQ is pretty much the exact same, just an improved UI. Uh, you don't really have to, like, press anything to edit it. It just updates automatically, right? Um, so you can just see that little... Um, right, add FAQs and then delete them. Pretty straightforward. Um, and these can be really powerful too, right? So sometimes I tell people, right, or, you know, we've been using it as almost like example messages, right? Example responses. Um, so maybe you could, you know, think of this as not just FAQs, but example, like message interactions, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah. Anyway, moving on to the script. So now guys, this is, uh, you know, probably the, the most important and definitely the most you know, talked about, I guess, or, you know, a lot of people spend a lot of time working on the script, which, you know, exactly you should, but, um, okay. Moving on to the script. So now you see the conversational booking tab is, or the conversational booking is now just like alone right here. So you can obviously enable that. I'll just, you know, set this up and then down to the script, uh, the intro message is the same. Um, you know, this is going to be the first message that you want to send out to the lead. Uh, still figuring out what we want to do this. We might change it up and just do steps, script steps, but, um, again, getting into prompting. These are basically instructions, right? You can include example messages, but all this is, is, you know, super simple telling the bot what to do, you know, first do this, first do this, right? So the script, a lot of you guys, um, you know, but now moving down here, this is probably, this is really cool guys. Um, the stopping condition. So a lot of you guys have been asking like, how do we turn the bot off if they say they're not interested or if they say stop, right? Well, first of all, if they say stop, it's going to turn D and D on. Um, so if they ever say stop, it will, you know, D and D, you don't have to worry about that. Um, GHL handles that, right. Um, but you know, you could also add these conditions where you can literally describe to the AI when to stop the bot. And basically what it does is the AI will return true or false, you know, when to stop the bot based on your conditions. And if it's true, it'll just remove the AI bot act attack. But here you say, you know, stop the conversation. If they are not the business we're trying to reach stop, if they say they're not interested, stop. Once you send them the link, stop. If they ask you a bunch of things in the same room, right. Um, Super, super straightforward, but again, stopping conditions are really cool. So this was a very highly requested um, feature, right? The active hours of your follow-up. So, you know, it's kind of weird if you guys are sending follow-ups at 2 a.m., right? Um, but now 
you can actually set a time window. You can set the time zone. So you make sure that it's in appropriate business hours. You can add a business or a follow-up, right? Time from last message. And you can choose from minutes, hours, or days. Follow up with the lead. Super simple. Um, and then the extract data, right? So this has been improved a lot, guys. Um, I know you guys were having some trouble with it before, a handful of people. And the main reason for that was because it was using GPT 3.5. You know, we haven't been charging anyone for it because 3.5, right? Um, but 3.5 is reasoning, especially when it comes to things like this. Um, you know, sometimes it was making a lot of errors. But thankfully, we have GPT 4.0 Mini, which is amazing and cheaper. So I just turned it on for that. But again, pretty straightforward, right? You can just describe, you know, what the variable is, and then the AI will analyze. Um, and one thing to, to keep in mind is the true and false is literally a tag. So maybe I should put that as tag, but um, you know, when it's true, the tag will be added. Okay. Now onto the test bot. So obviously this is just a little UI to test your bot. Um, 